Welcome to our online Kids, Carols, and Chaos Christmas Eve service. Together, St. Thomas and Foothills United Churches are so proud to bring you this service that's geared towards families and children. We hope you enjoy it. Special thanks to Rowan Burko and his mom for sharing his movie-making gifts later in the service. Now let us join together in singing Santa Claus is Coming to Town. we gather in worship, we acknowledge that we are on Treaty 7 land to demonstrate our commitment to honoring the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We are working together as a faith community in laying the foundation for and living out true reconciliation by being intentional and mindful in acknowledging the land where we gather and the first peoples who traditionally have lived here. It's meant to show respect for them, their contributions, and their ways of knowing, which are reflected through the stories and songs that have lived on this land for thousands of years. We give thanks for the traditional territories and oral practices of the indigenous nations of the Siksika, the Kainai, the Bakani, the Stony, Nakoda, the Tsutsina and all peoples who make their homes in this our Treaty 7 region of southern Alberta. We also give thanks and acknowledge this land to include the Region 3 of the Métis Nation. Let us gather for worship in this time as we light our candles this evening. Everything has changed. It is now the time of the color purple. Purple is the color of kings and queens. No one could wear purple in those days except royal purple. Roman citizens could wear a little strip of purple, but that was all. Purple is a serious color, and something serious is about to happen. A king is coming, but he is not the kind of king that people thought was coming. This king had no army, no great house, and no riches. The king was a baby who was born in a barn. This is full of mystery. You know, a mystery is hard to enter sometimes. That is why this time of Advent is so important. Sometimes people can walk right through a mystery and not even know it's there. This time of year, you will see, purple, you will see people hurrying in the malls, buying their things and doing this and that, but they will miss the mystery. They don't know how to get ready, or maybe they just forgot. The church learned a long time ago that people need a way to get ready to enter or even come close to the mystery like Christmas. The church set aside four weeks to get ready. This is such a great mystery that it takes a long time to get ready. During this time, we are all on the way to Bethlehem. We are all making a journey. We are all getting ready to enter the mystery of Christmas. So let's go with the prophets, the holy family, the shepherds, the angels, the magi, and all the rest to make the journey that was not just back then, it is also now. The first Sunday of Advent, we talk about the prophets. And the prophets show us the way to Bethlehem. 
they point us the way to Bethlehem. They didn't know exactly what was going to happen there, but they knew this was the place. This Sunday, this first Sunday in Advent, is the time we remember the prophets. There's the prophet that is pointing the way to Bethlehem, showing us the way too. We need to stop and watch and pay attention to that hope that the prophets are showing us. We light the candle of hope for the first Sunday in Advent. A candle is burning, the flame warm and bright. A candle of hope in December's dark night. While angels sing blessings from that starry sky, our hearts we prepare now for Jesus. We're going to continue on our journey in our second Sunday of Advent. This is the Sunday of peace. And this Sunday, we talk about the, royal, the Holy Family. Mary and Joseph, and they're traveling to Bethlehem. And they didn't travel alone. They traveled with a donkey. And it's the Sunday of peace, the second Sunday of Advent, because Mary is pregnant. And the donkey helped out a lot. Sometimes she would ride the donkey, and then she'd get uncomfortable and she'd have to walk. And the donkey would walk alongside of her. Then she'd get uncomfortable walking, and she'd have to ride the donkey. And it was back and forth and back and forth. And that gave Joseph a great amount of peace because it's very hard to keep a pregnant wife happy when she's pregnant and walking so far. And so our second Sunday of Advent is when we remember the Holy Family and we light the candle of peace. journey on to the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. This is the card of the shepherds. And today we remember the shepherds on the third Sunday of Advent. And we remember them being in the fields around Bethlehem, keeping their sheep. They were trying to stay awake so the wolves could not come and get the sheep. And suddenly there was much light in the air, in the sky and it hurt their eyes. They were so afraid. Their hearts were beating so loudly when they could hear something beside their own, when they could hear something besides their own hearts, they thought they heard the singing in the sky. That also scared them, and then until they heard the words of the song, the angels were singing, don't be afraid. And so of course the shepherds weren't afraid. That's how angels work. They make us not afraid just by saying, don't be afraid. The angels say it's something like this. Don't be afraid. We bring you tidings of great joy, peace on earth, and goodwill to everyone. A child is born. Go, hurry, run to Bethlehem to see the child who will change everything. Because there was so much joy in the air, the third Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of joy. And we mark that with a pink ribbon or a pink candle. All the other candles are the same color, but today the joy candle is pink. And we remember how joyful the shepherds were to be the first to learn about the baby being born. On 
the fourth Sunday of Advent, we remember the Magi, the three wise men. They came from far in the east, and they were wise people, so wise that people thought they were magic. We get the word magic from the name they were called in their own language, the Magi. Of all the things they knew, they knew the most about the stars. They knew where each star was supposed to be at each time of the year, so they could tell people when it was time to plant their crops or take a trip on the ocean in a boat or cross the high mountain passes when the snow wasn't too deep. Suddenly, they saw a wild star. It was not like any other star that was in, on any of the maps. It went where it wanted to go. It did not stay put. They decided to follow the wild star to see where it was going and what it wanted to show them. They followed the star all the way to Bethlehem, but they came so far away, they went so far away, and they got there after the baby was born. There was all, they were always late, it seems. Every late year they were late. They usually didn't arrive until January 6th. But we remember them anyways, because like us, they too are on the way to Bethlehem. And because they traveled so far and with such conviction, we remember the Magi this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of love, because it took a great deal of love and trust for them to travel so far. finally made it to Christmas. We have finally finished our journey to Bethlehem. And of course on Christmas and Christmas Eve, we remember the most important person of this entire story, and that, of course, is baby Jesus being born on Christmas. Now, we celebrate Christmas and we focus on Jesus, and it was a shocking story of Jesus being born in a barn. But the most shocked of this entire story was not who you would think. A lot of people think it was the kings or the Pharisees or the people in power or Mary and Joseph themselves, but the most surprised person and the most surprised character in the story was the old cow. Because when she woke up in the morning, she went to her trough to eat her breakfast of hay and couldn't because lo and behold, there was a baby there. So, we have finished our journey to Advent and to Bethlehem. And so we light the Christ candle last. As all the light comes and illuminates the world. together in our call to worship, your part is in yellow. Today we visit the old story we know so well. May we hear it and see it as if for the first time. 
And now let us join our voices together in our opening prayer saying, God who loves us unconditionally, we are grateful to celebrate the Christmas story every year. It reminds us that Jesus came to live with us in this imperfect world with arms always wide open to us. We feel God's welcome, our worth in that welcome, and we give thanks for the freedom that comes with that perfect love. The time has come to recreate the nativity of the birth of Jesus. And we don't know how this story came to us. We don't know how it was remembered. Yes, but... we do. What? We do know where the story came from. Mary pondered these things in her heart. Betcha she remembered everything and then told everyone about it later. It was Mary for the win. Okay, we have the story of Christ's birth told to us by his mother, which we are here to recreate today. But there's a change. Normally, we have all of the families who come to this service dressed up and participate in making the story, nativity story, come to life. That's really true, and, but this year we can't be together, obviously. We're doing something a bit differently this year. This year we have a wonderfully talented young person who has put together a Lego stop motion video to accompany our telling of the story. So, let us begin at the beginning. Mary the calm, always collected, perfect mother who never did she, anything she wrong. She lost Jesus, just, she lost Jesus. She's, she lost Jesus for three days. What? She what? lost Jesus for three days. Don't you remember when he was a kid and after visiting the temple, they left without him? And they didn't even notice for an entire day. She lost Jesus, big time. Okay, so Mary, pretty good mother, all things considered. Yeah. Uh, at only 13 or 14 years of age, was visited by an angel to tell her she was the chosen one to be the mother of God's son. That must have freaked her out, hey? I have no doubt it, it probably did, but the Bible tells us that Mary holds herself with great poise and dignity, knowing that God is using her to change everything. Mary's fiancé, Joseph, is also with her, a carpenter by trade. Who still probably didn't know what he was getting into, but at the same time, he was kind of game because an angel came and told him to chill, and it was fine, and thank goodness he did. Oh 
Joseph were not in their hometown, but instead had traveled to Bethlehem, home of Joseph's people, for a census was being taken. So many people were traveling. There was no room in the inn. They had to spend the night in a barn. It wasn't a barn. What do you mean it wasn't a barn? Well, it, I mean, it wasn't. And what do you think What do you think of as an inn or a hotel or a motel, whatever? It, it wasn't really that either. How do you know? Because I pay attention to recent academic research on these things. Uh-huh. You clicked on that article on the internet, didn't you? Yeah. But it was an excellent source, and also with pictures. Anyhow, it wasn't like people had inns where travelers stayed. Homes in the area, then and now, had an extra room, either off the back or on top, that would be pulled into service when random travelers needed a place to stay. So, what the scripture's saying is that everyone's guest rooms were full. But what does that have to do with no barn? Where did they go then? Well, I mean, it's not like there weren't animals there. The, the other choice was to stay in the other living areas. The people shared a large or living space there with their animals. There wasn't a separate place for the animals where the, where the animals stayed. This was one room. It was living at its finest. Wait, so it wasn't just Mary, Joseph, and the animals? Nope. They likely had a whole extended family around them. Since this was Joseph's hometown, they were at least extended cousins, probably everywhere. So we need to include those cousins and aunts and uncles and whoever else was around. Much better. I honestly feel so much better knowing that Mar Mary probably didn't have to have a baby all by herself with only Joseph and the cows helping her. What a terrible thought. Surely some cousin had given birth before or was even a midnight wife. Next we have the animals, who were living with the cousins. At least they provided body heat. So, what do you think, some cattle? Yeah, chickens. Donkeys. Sheep. No, they come later. What, really? I can't wait. So back at it, we have Mary, Joseph, the assorted relatives, and animals, and now we have an angel to bless everything and sing heavenly songs. collect some sheep and some shepherds. So, do you think the sheep had long, fluffy coats or were they freshly shorn? Did the shepherds use their fluff as pillows? Do you think the shepherds wore garments from the wool of only their sheep to show flock loyalty? Or did they cheat and wear the wool of other flocks too? What are you even talking about? Like Mary, I enjoy pondering. So what's wrong with that? Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praying, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Whoa, that was nice. I thought it would fit. Christ child is born and the light of the star shines down from the sky, we might as well bring in the three magi at this time as well. Technically they didn't come on Christmas Eve though. That's true. They actually came later when baby Jesus was a bit older and Mary and Joseph had already returned home. But we like to include them in the Christmas Eve story. Right. So let's include the three magi or wise ones. Well, we don't know that there were three. Of course we do. Three gifts and three magi. Three gifts listed, yeah. But maybe there were several who went in on gifts together. They were the really expensive ones, you know? Fine. Let's include more wise people. Oh, and just because we're all playing the parts of the nativity, we wanted to make sure that those of you watching had the opportunity to give gifts as well. We thank you for both continuing to support and perhaps consider supporting this ministry and encourage people to visit our website and click on the Donate Now button. Nice plug for the churches. You like that, eh? Shameless, but seriously, we are so grateful for everyone's support of both St. Thomas and Foothills. Let's sing. <laughs> of the Christmas story. I think we need a prayer. Why are you looking at me? Can you say a prayer? Actually, let's do it together. Okay, let's pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, we, we come, come humbly before you with ourselves and our simple gifts. May you take what we have given and transform it into awesome things that make our world a better place. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let it receive. going to take a moment now to pray for ourselves and for the world. That's a lot of praying. It sure is. How do we prepare for something like that? I think the best way to prepare is to take a deep breath, hold it, and then let it go. Like this? No, not like that. Like take a deep breath, do it with me, hold it, let it go. Exactly. Let's do it one more time. Let us pray. Holy dreamer of Christmas and all times, 
We hear, when we hear the story of Jesus' birth, we can't help but have a smile. We believe in telling the story. The story of a baby who grew up and changed the world. The story of our faith. We believe in speaking up for our neighbors, for the ignored, and for the judged. We believe in speaking out against hurt, bullying, unfairness, hate, and hunger. We believe in passing the mic so that we are not the only ones speaking. We believe in dreaming and that those who dream cannot keep silent. Speak to us, holy God, and speak through us. And as we take a moment of silence, we invite you too at home to share the dreams that you would love to see come true. We are assured that all dreams and prayers are heard by God, whether we say them out loud or hold them silently in our hearts. And so let's continue praying by singing together the Lord's Prayer. commissioning at this time. After each line I read, I invite you at home to yell wow and amen as loud as you can. May we go forth from this place with a deeper understanding of what Christmas dreams are all about. Wow and amen. May we enter into the world with more compassion, hope, and joy. Wow and amen. May we remember that God loves you and is always with us. Wow and amen. And may we feel uh, that spread the deep love and peace that we believe and dream comes with the season of Christmas. Wow and amen. So as we leave our time together and leave this place on this Christmas Eve, I would like to show you how we can take God's light with us. And so these are candles here in the sanctuary, but you, can't have, you don't have them at home, right? And so here's a way that we can change the light. And you can do this at home too. We change the light, and then it allows us to take it with us because the light changes into smoke. And sometimes we smell it, we can smell it, Oh my goodness. See, love doesn't want to go out. 
not where we take the light with us, wherever we go, and as we in encourage and as we are with other people in our daily lives. Amen.